Welcome to the studio, it's Froyle here. I'm so glad you joined me. We have some fabulous mixed media techniques. Right, so I'm absolutely loving these bird masks from Piamata Studio and I wanna have another play with some ideas of different textured papers to print them on because it's just fun. <laughs> and I like having fun. So I'm starting with the fabulous iridescent bronze fine. I've got him a little crooked on the plate because that's how he fits. I think I'll take off some of the paint again with this fabulous leaf stamp because I really like the texture that it creates. And putting it onto a piece of paper next to you means you're saving the paint and you're creating more fabulous collage papers which we love, right? It's a win-win. So I'm just gonna add some of that texture to the plate because that prints really well and it's really easy and simple. Then we'll pull that print. But what I'm really after is the ghost print of the beautiful raven that will be underneath the mask, the paint that is left behind on the plate once you remove all of the paint from around the mask. That's the ghost print and it's fabulous for printing. And with these particular bird shapes, it just looks amazing. The masks are glorious, they work so well. Yes, I've been a little bit obsessed with them the last few days, <laughs> but it will pass. I get like that. I get on a tangent, I go crazy with an idea and then something else shiny comes along and I wanna do that next. So today, right now, we're playing with this glorious mask again and seeing what other prints we can create. Oopsies. Right, so that's the first print. Don't worry about if you tear your prints. That happens. I'm going to be ripping it up for collage anyway. See how glorious that leaf stamp works with the background? Now, I can spray that with some eye zincs or I can do anything else to it. I could add some pencils or crayons or drawing or markers or like the list goes on. It's quite endless what you can do with these prints. But what I want is the ghost print that's under there. And I'm just going to put that straight away onto this gel print I was printing the other day a whole heap of papers and I've got a pile of them and I really like to use them the next time I want to print something. That's the benefit of jelly printing is that you can come back to your papers and add another layer at any time. Absolutely fabulous. Oh man, I just love it so much. And it's instantaneous. I love instant. That works for me. Look at that glorious raven on the black background with the golden bronze fine. I'm loving that. Let's do some more. So many ideas to try. This time we're going with carbon black. And now that I have the fabulous carbon black under the mask, I'm going to put it on this print that I did the other day with my own mask design. It's a poem that I wrote and I've been recently talking about it and I printed off a whole heap of prints. So I'm thinking that this fabulous looking raven in the glorious carbon black would look really cool on top of all that text design. You just have to try your ideas see what works, and then come up with another one. <laughs> Let's see if this print pulled off my beautiful raven. Yes, look at that. That looks glorious. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to go crazy with this idea and use up some of my other prints. Don't you just love the beautiful richness of that carbon black? Put our glorious mask down. Now this time, seeing as my text is working so well, what about if I stamp some of that in it and around it? That could be really fun. I love foam stamps because they're so easy to use. 
and it's just a bit of fun. And the over stamping looks fabulous on the paper and that creates glorious collage paper. Just needs a little spray with some ink or even the black and white looks really fabulous. Your fingertips are the best to get in and around the mask. Get all that paint off the plate. I think what I love about the using the gel plate for printing is how soft it is. It, feel, it feels really good under your fingertips. Right, oh, well, I'll try not to tear this one. <laughs> Look at that. That text stamp looks really cool. Now, don't worry, we can add to these prints later a quick spray with some eyes inks or some Tim Holtz. Distressed inks will work really well to colour up that white patch or you could just use it as black and white. That'd work too. So now we have the glorious paint and this time I'm going to put it on this print. Oh, that just looks fabulous. Look how great that line is in the carbon black from the mask of the ghost print on the fabulous text. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Just love it. That makes me so happy. It's really good when you've got a pile of prints that you can use for the next layer and create something else and take them into a better direction and just improve them. Such a simple way to improve your jelly prints. Let's go back to the beautiful bronze fine. Add some of the glorious stamping. That's just beautiful. Now we've got all that glorious bronze fine trapped under the mask, but what if the paper you wanna put it on is too patterned and would clash with your colors? So I really like this paper and I wanna put the beautiful bronze bird on there, but the paper is too bright and it's too patterned and I don't think the print would work well. So I'm going to show you what I like to do. This is transparent mixing white. Now we've got to let this layer dry and when this layer is dry, we're going to pull it with this transparent mixing white, a Liquitex paint, and then we're going to print it onto the fabulous paper. And what this does is knocks back the color of that paper so it's not so bright and bold and you'll be able to see the bird better. Well, that's the plan anyway. <laughs> We'll see how it works. As you can see, I've used it a fair bit. So I'm gonna squeeze out what's left in the bottom of my tube. Right, my beautiful bronze bird should now be dry enough to pull the print. As long as we can squeeze out some of this paint, we'll be fine. <laughs> Clearly, I like using it. <laughs> what I like about this technique is that it just gives you another option. You can just create another look to your prints and you can just make them a little bit more different by creating the layer using the transparent white. Righto, we'll see how this works. This is just craft paper from one of those pads that I bought from, hmm, probably Spotlight. But any of the department stores usually has a craft section with pretty affordable pads of paper. I like getting them from there because the paper's quite sturdy. It's a decent card stock and it's just fun for when you're exploring different jelly printing ideas and you need something a little bit more robust. And you know, I tend to need robust because <laughs> I try all sorts of ideas when I'm printing on the gel plate because that's the point. It's fun and it's really experimental. Righto, we've given that a good rub, so let's see how it printed. Oh yeah, that's just beautiful. See how the bronze bird is now sitting on the transparent white and it's just knocked the color back. 
this is what it is in the print and this is what it was originally and it's just a really good way to make your focal point stand out more than what it would on a patterned or textured background. And it's just a really interesting look. I really like it. Cool bananas, let's do another one. How about we have a go with some copper this time? Yes, I do love the metallic colors. And let's use these cute little birds. These also masks from PM Artist Studio. They're just so cute. <laughs> Look at them. How many can we fit on? Let's do four. <laughs> Oops, get off my finger. <laughs> right, let's try that. Oh, do we want some stamping? Yes, of course we do. A few leaves. They print up beautiful, love the textured leaves, and we'll add some more color to that later. Now for our masks, and all that glorious paint trapped underneath. Right, let's squeeze out the remnants of my tube. <laughs> and we'll take this print, ooh yes. And see how it looks, yay. And I'm going to put it on this piece of cardstock. I love the turquoise color and the pattern looks really good. I just don't want it to be so strong and overwhelm my cute little copper birds. Give it a good rub and then let's see what we've got. Oh, the copper looks fabulous on the turquoise and the mixing white just dulls the background a little bit so you can see a stronger focus on your beautiful birds. I'm loving it, the colors look fabulous. I love the what the tinting white does to create the background and it's just beautiful, that's worked really well. So I've got one more idea to play with for improving your jelly prints. Now I did this the other day. It has interference paint, which I love. Interference paint is titanium coated microflakes and it interferes with the light spectrum. When it's over a white or light background, you can't see it. I'll show you like here. It's very hard to see and it's very unimpressive. But when it's over a dark background, like the black tissue I printed this mask on, it has the beautiful pearlescent or opalescent, actually looks like Pawa. I know, right? It does. I love it, as you can imagine. This was a quick print I took to play with the idea of printing it onto black tissue and it worked. I'm pretty happy with that. It's the first time I actually tried that idea. So I have this print, which is the ghost print of the beautiful bird mask. And I thought, well, why don't I just add some interference paint to this beautiful print? And I'm sure it'd look amazing. Now I've got interference violet. This is a golden paint, but you can get interference colors in other brands as well. This is a green. I know, right? Look how unimpressive they are on white. And blue-green, let's have a look at that. You can also get the paint in a full body tube as well. And if you're going to print with it, I have personally found the full body is better for using with stencils. I tried the stencils with the fluid paint and they were too thin. They're very, very thin paint. And so if you want to do stencils or printing, the full body's better. But, you know, I'm using what I've got. <laughs> so that's how it's going to go. Look, clearly my orange is almost used up. So I particularly like this color. So I thought we could just have a little play with this print and see what the interference paint would look like on this glorious bird.
because you know you don't know till you try these ideas oh that's gonna work that's the what one was that <laughs> that's the blue i think oh the green i don't know man i've already forgotten <laughs> that's funny well i think it's funny so i'm thinking what about if we just paint some of these beautiful feathers they could look it could look really cool i mean it might not it might look naff but you don't know till you try right so we're going to have a little play look at the incredible violet oh man that's a beautiful color and because our glorious ghost print is in the bronze it just looks beautiful I mean, seriously, why have I not done this before? <laughs> I was just going to do a couple of the feathers, but I'm really getting carried away now. It's really therapeutic. <laughs> I'm loving this. Oh man, look at the beautiful orange. No wonder why it's almost empty in my tube. <laughs> That's just glorious. That really looks like the bronze. Well, I've got entirely carried away. I was just going to do a few of the feathers, but it was so fun and it's so therapeutic <laughs> that I've painted the whole bird. <laughs> do you think I should finish his head? I mean, or should I leave that black? I might leave that black because I kind of really like that. So that's a bit of fun. That's really fun. That's the interference paints. So have a look at that if you're interested in creating something a little bit different. I was using mostly the fluid paint, but use the full body if you want to print with it, like I did on this one, because I think it would be a lot easier to work with. Now, that is just fun, and a few different ways of how to improve your jelly prints, how to take them to the next level, simple techniques of creating another layer, using the transparent mixing white, or adding some interference paints over some black prints. Now, it don't, you don't have to print on black tissue to do this. You can pull the print with a dark color. Just make sure you're putting your interference paint over a dark color, or if you put it over a light color, they're just not going to show up. They're like magic, really? <laughs> so that's a bit of fun. I'm going to leave his head like that in black because I think it then highlights his feathers, and I'm really enjoying that. That was just a whole lot of fun. What I love about using these eye zinc sprays is that the paper, in this case, the Japanese uh, calligraphy paper that I printed this print on, sucks up all the ink so fast. And where the metallic paint here that I used to pull the print, it kind of repels the water-based inks and it looks absolutely fabulous. So all that stamping that I did on the print, you can now see it when I sprayed it with the licorice. Love this color, it's amazing. And how good does that look on the copper? Yes, that looks fabulous. Now, if you wanna actually answer my questions that I'm asking you <laughs> and chat with me live, then come and join me on Fridays, 10 a.m. New Zealand time. Not sure what time that is for you, but you'll find me in my Patreon community, live in the studio, baby. <laughs> we can chat about art, life, make collage, whatever works, really. You can show me what you're working on. You could ask me a hundred questions. It's a whole lot of fun. So have a look at that on Patreon, live in the studio, Fridays, 10 a.m. Yay, hope to see you there. 
Now don't forget, if you want more info or discount codes, you'll find it all in the description under the video. And if you missed any episodes, I have a playlist for the 100 Days of Collage. It's fabulous. All the videos are there. So go on and have a look. I know you're going to love it.